today I took the first step in leaving my job. I've just been getting sign after sign after sign that I'm not where I'm supposed to be and I know what I want to be doing. I'm only 23, I'm turning 24 next month and I know it's early in my career to do this type of thing, but there's gotta be some sort of delusion, I feel like, because I don't have, I barely have a savings account. Like I do not, I am not someone who can comfortably quit her job right now, but. I took the first step today and I talked with my boss and I haven't put my two weeks in yet but I, I did take the first step in just putting it on her radar. Hello. If you see my sweat stain at any point under either arm in this video, no you didn't. Get over it. I don't know how to not sweat through my clothes and I'm not changing my shirt. Should we wear these? There's a little bit of a glare, but otherwise I can't really see if I don't wear them. So I'll wear them for a little bit at least. Okay, I am about to tell you the entire backstory of why I quit my job, how I quit my job, how I got to this position to quit my job. And by this position, I don't mean that I'm rolling in the dough financially because of my brand. Like you saw in that first clip, like that's not the position that I'm in. I just decided to go for it. And so I'm gonna explain all of that. But first I actually filmed my last week of work and all the emotions I was having, all the feelings I was having. So I'm gonna put that footage in right now. So you guys can just kind of see how my last week of work was. And then at the end of the video, stay tuned because that's where I'm gonna get into all the nitty gritty of just my plan and how I quit and why I quit and everything. So let's roll that other footage right now. <sighs> you guys. It is Tuesday morning. Oh, I'm so tired. And it's my last week of work. It's my last week at this job. It's been, I, I feel like I haven't even, it hasn't set in yet because I've been so just all over the place the past week. I don't know. I just felt like I wasn't in my normal routine, which is fine, but it also made this we come up really quickly and I just haven't really prepared or thought about it and now I'm in it and I'm realizing that everything I'm doing this week it's my last time doing it for this company like we had our Monday meeting yesterday it was my last Monday meeting now it's kind of hitting me now that it's Tuesday I got Monday out of the way and I'm just really trying to be intentional with this week because like I said it is sad like I wasn't I'm not leaving this job because it's you know, this toxic work environment and I hate my job. I really enjoy my job and I really enjoy my team, which is why this is really bittersweet. So this, it's, I'm feeling a bit sad, a bit anxious about the future, a bit nervous about what's to come, but I'm also excited. Good morning. Wednesdays are usually my longest, busiest days of work because I have a presentation that I have to do. And today I also have like a few more meetings that I have to do in addition to that as I'm wrapping up my week. So it's gonna be a busy one, but I woke up early and I'm ready for it. We ran out of Earl Grey tea, so I'm drinking green tea with cream. You know those things at your job that you despise doing but every job has them every job there's parts that you like about it and parts that you dislike about it but you gotta do it all there's this one thing that i despise i despise doing it it's like this reporting thing this is the last time i'll ever have to do this task that i despise so i'm excited <sighs> i did it was a busy day. I mean, it's only 1 p.m. I'm by no means done. I have a lot more to go, but every Wednesday I have a big, oh, I think I, I, I told you about this. I have a big presentation and I just finished it. it. Wasn't my best, but we finished it. And we also finished the other two big meetings that I had today. So the rest of the day is just for me to work on outstanding stuff. And we're already into the second half of the week, which is wild.
I'm about to join my final meeting. It's 1.30 on a Friday and I have been grinding. Trying to get all this offboarding stuff done. Creating like instruction docs and everything, but I have my last meeting starting right now. Feels weird. Hasn't hit me yet. It hasn't hit me yet, but it does feel weird because I've been so busy that I haven't had time to think about it. That today's actually my last day. Thought I would pull the camera out to talk about how I'm feeling. I was feeling really good all of yesterday. So it's Sunday today and I, I just feel like I have this anxiety coming on about not having a job. And I didn't think it would set in for a while, but I mean, yesterday I just had a chill day and now that it's Sunday and tomorrow is a day, obviously Monday, that I would have been working. It's starting to hit me that, oh, I'm not going to work and I'm sure it's gonna feel and when I say not work, like not work my traditional job, like I'm still going to be working on the brand, but it's um, it's just weird that it's finally here because this is something that I've always wanted to do and now it's here and I just feel like I'm about to get really anxious. Like I don't feel super anxious yet, but I like it can feel it coming on. So I'm going to try and just calm down. And the best way that I've learned to manage my anxiety when my anxiety stems from like things that I have to do is like writing a list of everything that I need to do. So I actually did that this morning and I do feel better, but that's just how I'm feeling right now. So yeah. So yesterday I actually sat down and I filmed what I thought I was going to put in this video. It was basically like 45 minutes of me just explaining the entire backstory of my brand from the point that I started it like two and a half years ago when it was just a blog and an Instagram page. I literally explained like step by step how I got to this point, what my brand consists of now, like every step in the journey. And I realized that was just too much. That was too much to start us off on in this first video. If you've stumbled upon this content as a budding entrepreneur, as a budding content creator, as someone who wants to work for yourself, start your own brand, I can totally make a video. I'm no expert by any means, but I can totally make a video on the entire process, like how I started to how I got to where I am now all the different steps, all the rebrands I've been through, challenges, wins, all of that. I can make a whole video on the entire backstory. If you are interested in that video, you can leave a comment down below, you can DM me on Instagram, you can like this video, and that all that will just show me that I should make that video. But for right now, let's just focus on the SparkNotes version to kind of speed this process along. Now, for those of you who are new here or newer-ish here, I started this brand of mine about two and a half years ago when I was getting sober in college. I had had my fair share of issues with addiction and with substance abuse and I was getting sober at the ripe age of 21. And my brand initially started out as just a blog and an Instagram page. And I started those just sharing my story because it is a very isolating experience to go through trying to get sober in the middle of a college town where binge drinking is prevalent, binge drinking is everywhere. It was a very lonely experience. So the way that I connected with other people who were also going through that was through my writing on my blog, was through my Instagram page. So that was how this brand started from a very early, I think from very early on when I started getting messages of the impact I was having on people and how much I was helping people. I think at that point I knew that this is something that I could grow to be a much, much bigger thing than just a blog and an Instagram page. I wasn't exactly sure how I was gonna do that or what exactly it could grow into, but I knew that it could have a deeper impact than just a blog and an Instagram page. So two and a half years later, I'm basically two and a half years sober. I had one slip up, which I have a video on my channel about that. I still have my original blog. It has rebranded and it looks a lot better now. I still have my original Instagram page, but that brand of mine has also grown into the YouTube channel. It's grown into a TikTok page. It's grown into actual virtual meetings that other sober and sober curious young people can come to and connect and talk. I send out a newsletter each week for the members of that group. So it's just, 
the audio cut out here for some reason, but what I was saying was it's grown into something so much more. And now that I've seen the impact that this content has had on people's lives and the, and the impact that the meetings have had on people's lives and the tremendous growth that I've seen in people who have come to the meetings, I truly don't think that there's a ceiling on how much this can grow and how many lives we can impact. So that is kind of the the facets of my brand. Like when I'm talking about working for myself and I'm talking about my brand, those are the things I'm working on. My content on YouTube, Instagram, and TikTok, and my blog, and the meetings and the community that I run, which has three meetings a week, a newsletter, a group me, all of that. So those are the main facets. Now, like you saw in that beginning, at the very beginning of this video, I am not someone who started content creation or started a side hustle. It blew up, it grew really quickly. I'm rolling in the dough enough so that I can quit my job. Like that's not my story, that's not what happened to me. It's been a very slow burn, a very slow growth, and I, I'm not making enough to the point where I could quit my job and work for myself full time. I'm going to be living off a small savings account that I have. I'm currently making from my YouTube ads and from my meetings less than $500 a month. So I just wanted to preface that, that in no way am I like, I'm financially stable enough because I have a small savings account where I could make it maybe three months, but I'm kind of just manifesting um, more money coming in in those three months because now that I have my full attention and full time to work on it. But obviously you guys will see that journey as we go. To give you an overall picture of where my brand and reach is currently at and because I think it will be fun to look back on, I currently have 2,800 YouTube subscribers, 3,300 Instagram followers, or 1,200 TikTok subscribers and about 200 plus people, a little bit over 200 people signed up for my meetings. So that's where I'm at right now. And I just wanted to put in here that I love you all to death. If you have ever interacted with my content, if you've ever watched a video of mine, if you've ever DM'd me, liked a photo, liked a TikTok, you are the reason why I can even consider quitting my job. So I just wanted to thank you so much for all of the support because without people watching my channel i obviously would not even be able to consider this so i just wanted to say thank you and i appreciate you and i love you now ever since i started this brand i wanted to take it full time in some capacity i wanted my passion has always been since i got sober at least i didn't really i didn't really have a passion prior to this which is interesting to me like i think everyone a lot of young people especially and people just in general in life are going through life who don't have a passion they're wondering what their passion is and i do feel very lucky that you know it was difficult to go through substance abuse issues and addiction but at the same time it brought me to where i am today and it helped me find my passion so if you haven't found your passion yet there are many videos on like how to find your passion there's also time if you just wait, I'm, I know that maybe one day it could be a situation like me where you go through something and that brings you to what you're passionate about. I'm living my truth. This is my passion. This is what I want to do. There have been times when I've been like, why the hell am I posting this stuff on the internet for everyone to see? People are going to have opinions either way. So they can either have opinions of me not doing what I love and I suffer because I'm not being authentically me for the sake of other people, but they're still judging me or I can live in my truth and people will still judge me, but at least I'm happy. So that's the way that I'm thinking about this all. A few months ago, I was literally getting sign after sign from the universe that I wasn't where I was supposed to be in this full-time job. I was asking the universe for signs and it was giving me like these clear, crisp, like in my face signs. I wasn't exactly sure how I was gonna quit my job, but at one, one day I just like really felt like I just wasn't where I was supposed to be, so I actually typed in a Google Doc like everything that I would say to my boss if I quit my job, what I would say about my passion, what I would say just to tell her my story, and writing that helped me quit. Like writing that, I was like, okay, now I know what I would say, why don't I just take the first step and do it? And I was also reading You Are a Badass by Jen Sincero at the time. I read it once before. I read it before I started my YouTube channel. I don't agree with everything she says in that book, but if you need a kick in the ass to start something that you've been pondering, that's a great book to read. So I was reading that and it was saying, you know, you just have to take the first step. If you keep moseying around in the life that you've always lived, just dreaming of something else that you want, you're never gonna get there because you haven't taken that leap of faith, that first step. And so 
after writing out what I would say to my boss, I was like, okay, why don't I just do it? Like, why don't I just tell her? And so after writing it literally that day, I was like, I'm just gonna do it. So I, I talked to her about it. I talked to her how I'd been feeling that this is really what I wanted to do. And she was super understanding, which helped. And here we are. I put in my, I put in a month's notice. So this was a month ago. Um, and here we are. This is my first week working for myself. We are literally on a floating rock in space. If I didn't take this chance and just focus on this and see where I could take it, I would wonder for the rest of my life what it would have been like to just focus on this. And I don't wanna live my life with regrets. I'm 24, this is the time to do it. Also in terms of sobriety, if you're sober, you probably know this, like being sober all the time, not having that escape and being fully just present with yourself all the time, you have a lot of time to think. You have a lot of time to question your decisions, where you're at in life. And I was just, I wasn't, I wasn't gonna be okay with doing a job that I wasn't 100% passionate about. I think it also comes down to delusion. This is something that I heard from one of my favorite YouTubers, Lynette Adkins. There has to be some level of delusion. I am, I am partly, I am slightly, maybe completely delusional for leaving my job and leaving a job that I was making pretty good money in for being a job right out of college. And to just quit that job, to leave it, to live off my emergency funds, savings account that I worked so hard to build up. There has to be some level of delusion there, but I fully believe that everyone, every major person that you can think of that followed their dreams and is now doing what they love, there was probably a point in their life where people thought they were delusional and maybe they even thought them, themselves were delusional. I definitely, there has to be some level of delusion going into this. And if that's you, I obviously, I don't encourage you to uproot your life and leave your job if you can't afford it. I know there's so many people who, can't afford it, they're working two, three jobs just to put food on the table, but I would just say, like I feel so grateful to be able to even be in a position where I'm questioning what I wanna do to even be, even to have a small savings account that will support me for a few months. Like I'm, I'm grateful to be in that position. And if you're in a similar position, I would just say do it for all the people who can't. Do it for all the people who, who don't have the option because the more people that we have living their truth, owning their truth, stepping into their power, living out their dreams, living out their passions, being their authentic self, the greater the world will be because when we lift ourselves up, we can lift other people up with us as well. Whew. With that, expect more, you know, working for myself type content in addition to my, you know, typical sobriety content, self-love content, everything. My camera died right there, but thank you so much, seriously, for all of your support, like I said, without, your support, I would not even have the thought or the option to quit my job. And with your support, I truly believe that there is no ceiling on how many lives we can impact, how big we can grow this community, how many people we can reach who right now are feeling isolated and alone because they feel like they're the only 20 something year old struggling with alcohol. You know, sobriety is definitely getting more mainstream. It's it's more talked about, it's less taboo, but I do think we have a long way to go. And with your support, with the growth of this channel, with the growth of the Steph Sober Squad, which is being rebranded, but right now it's called Steph Sober Squad, I think we just, we have limitless potential to impact so many lives in an inclusive and supportive way. So thank you so much, and I will see you in the next video.